I'm Susie Hassan and I'm the Gadget Queen. I love using fun gadgets in my kitchen because it just makes my life easier. And on today's episode, it's all about onions. That's why I nicknamed this episode Chop It Like It's Hot because we're chopping so many onions, we're gonna need special goggles for this. I cannot wait to show you. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is a baked French onion soup, minus the soup. It's just the onions part, but you're gonna get the whole flavor of the soup, but just the onions. Okay, so we're gonna get started, but as we do, I'm gonna pop on my onion goggles, okay? I mean, come on, this is a stylish piece, don't you think? So this is really great for, of course, not crying, not getting your eyes all tearied up, when you're cooking with onions. So I know it seems like a little bit of a silly gadget, but honestly, if you're cooking with a lot of onions like I do all the time, it kind of comes in handy. Plus, if your makeup and eye makeup is looking really good, I mean, come on, do you really want to ruin that? No. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. We have our onion goggles on, and if that's not fashionable enough, we've got what looks like a hair pick, right, from back in the day, okay? But this is actually gonna help us perfectly slice our onions. You could actually use this for other things too, tomatoes, strawberries, really just about anything to slice, but you're gonna get perfect slices with this. All right, so let me show you how to use this. So I'm just gonna get my onion ready. I'm gonna take off the ends and then take off the skin. Okay, so if you want the perfect circular slice, you're gonna have your onion this way, okay? So here are the ends that I cut off, right? So you're gonna pop it this way, and then you're gonna go ahead and stick the little pick right into that onion, okay? Now you can decide how thick you want that onion, okay? So you can go every slice or every other. It just depends on, again, the thickness that you want. Now for us, we kind of want a medium thickness, so I'm gonna do every other one. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and slice this down. So just pop that out. And now you have perfectly sliced onions that are the perfect size that we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those right on my baking sheet. And then I'm gonna get that next onion going. And you can see just how much faster it is when you have that little onion slicer. There's so many times when I'm cutting onions and honestly I waste the ends because I just don't know how to cut them down properly, you know? They just kinda, kinda gets away from me. Now you don't have to put the whole thing down so far. Um, you know, like just get it to, I'd say about maybe a quarter inch inside. Um, that's really all you need. Amazing, amazing slices. And I can already tell that these glasses are doing its job because having an onion this close to my eyes, I would definitely be tearing up. And as you can see, I'm not. Okay, so now we're ready to cheese it up and really give it that soup feel. So to do that, you're gonna need a really good Gruyere, okay? So that's what they use in all the fancy restaurants, and that's what you gotta use. You could maybe substitute it with Swiss, but Gruyere is really the way to go. And today we're using Boris Head because honestly, I think Boris Head cheese is like, the best cheese. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're actually gonna freshly grate the Gruyere with, of course, a hand grater because, you know, this is the gadget kitchen. Okay, so we're gonna do everything with a gadget. So we're gonna go ahead and use our hand grater. And oh my God, look at the beautiful shreds that just come out of this. Now, it's definitely easier to buy um, shredded cheese from the store, but there are many cheeses that they just don't shred for you. Greer is one of them. So we go ahead, we have, I think, plenty of Greer here. All right, just give that a little shake. All right, that's looking good. Now watch what we're gonna do here. Okay, so here I have my onions. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just brush a little bit of butter on the top of these. And again, I'm using my little monkey business, little fish. He looks like a little fish. 
You hear me talk a lot about the monkey business um, little gadgets and uh, they always usually have a little hand or a face or they look like, in this case, this looks like a little fish. Um, but they also serve a purpose. So in addition to being fun, they actually are very functional. And the interesting thing about the Monkey Business brand is that all of the people who design everything they have, they're actually designers that do other things like architecture design and things like that. So in their spare time, if they think of these interesting things, they make it for the Monkey Business uh, group. So that's why you see these interesting, like whether it's the Finn Baster or June Spoon, um, it's just really all these little, and this too, um, I'll show you this in a second, but this is actually a little bell pod that you put your onion in so it saves your onion. We'll get to that in a second. All right, so anyway, all right, so I got that going. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use uh, Lipton's beef onion soup mix. So it's a really great flavor for that uh, French onion soup, sans the soup, that we're doing here. Now you could also do this on the grill, and I've done it on the grill, and it's it's just as fabulous there. In this case though, we're just gonna bake it. Okay, just sprinkle that on there. All right, so I've got my, my mix on there. Now I'm actually gonna add a little bit of salt, and this is a special salt from our friends at Saltopia, the utopia of salt, okay? Now I've got June spoons holding my salt spoon, um, but here it's actually called been there, done you that. Been there, done you that. Like guys, this is the onion episode, so this is the perfect seasoning for this. Can you ever have too much onion? Heck no, not in my kitchen. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just sprinkle on a little bit of that onion salt. Put that over there. And then we're going to top it off with that Gruyere cheese. All right. All right, we're gonna go ahead and top it off with some Gruyere cheese here. And you know, with cheese, you can always be generous. All right, so now we're going to pop this into the oven. And it doesn't need that long, about 20 minutes. Quality, prime, fresh meats, cut fresh and delivered fast straight to your door. With Happy to Meet You, we help you bring the steakhouse to your house. The mission is simple, to deliver delicious premium meats while guaranteeing freshness at a great value, all delivered straight to your home with 100% satisfaction guaranteed because after all, we have our reputation at stake. For more information on our premium selections and how to order, go to www.happytomeetyou.com. Now, one of my favorite things to make is a bloomin' onion. Now, do not be concerned that it's gonna be too hard for you to make because I actually found a gadget that makes it super, super easy. So you're gonna get the same onion that you're gonna get at that fancy restaurant, okay? But you're gonna be able to do it at home. So let's get started here with our onion. So when I bought this kit, okay, it actually came with an onion slicer. So this is really perfect because you just pop your onion right in. Now make sure you keep the bottom though because we want it to bloom, okay? So you just pop the onion right in and now you're just gonna go and chop it through the slices. So you're gonna get this perfect bloom and it's not gonna go all the way down. It's gonna stop just shy so that way you still get all these awesome petals. There is my blooming onion, right? It's getting ready to bloom. It's still just in a little bud phase, okay? We're gonna set it off to the side. We're gonna do one more. 
All right, I love this gadget because it really takes the guesswork out of doing, cutting this in such a way. I mean, you know, um, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but honestly, having the gadget makes it so much easier. All right, I'm gonna pop this out, and there you have it. Now, we're gonna go ahead and work on the breading. I'm just gonna open this up, though, and show you there's all the perfect petals. Oh my God, this is gonna be so good. All right, so let's move this over to the side. Here, we're gonna get our little breader bowl. And it's actually, that's exactly what it's called. It's called the breader bowl because you're able to bread items in it without getting the whole house and whole kitchen messy. Now you can do a lot of different things in here. You're doing the bloomin' onion today, but if you wanna bread maybe a, a fish fry or a chicken or anything else, you can do it all in the breader bowl. So I'm excited to show you how this actually works. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put our breading in the bowl. Now, for this breading, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but today what we're gonna do is use Vicky's pancake mix and waffle mix. Now, the reason I do that is because it's actually one, it's a secret recipe that she, Vicky, created over 40 years ago, and it's a very light and fluffy pancake when you make it as a pancake. For a bloomin' onion, I need a very light batter, something that's gonna fry up really light, and so that's why I'm using Vicky's pancake batter. Okay, so I'm gonna pop the pancake batter into the breader bowl. And because it's a pancake batter, it's gonna have a little sweetness, which I actually want. If you don't want that sweetness, just use flour. Not a big deal. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and spice up the pancake batter. You could leave it as it is. I like it with a little sweetness, but I'm gonna add some savory to it. So here I actually have a little bit of paprika, I have a little bit of um, onion salt and garlic salt. And then to this, I'm gonna add my friends from Saltopia. They actually have a salt that's called Shook Up, which is all about ranch herbs, which is perfect for a blooming onion. So I'm gonna add some of this ranch to my batter. Oh man, this is gonna be so good. All right. And then I'm just gonna give it a little toss here. Oops. Just gonna give it a little bit of a mix. I always love using my king tongs. He's always so angry. No, he's happy, that's not true. He's a happy guy. Okay, so here's my breading in the breader bowl. Now here's what we do. So we place that on the top, okay? This is the little, the little great Thing, so everything stays in place when you put it on the top. All right, but we do need to do a little egg wash first. So we're gonna do that really quick. I got my little crack spot here on the side. So that's gonna help me crack these perfect eggs. All right. Give that a little. Now you're noticing I'm actually using uh, the, the rag a lot this episode for the onions. And who's holding my little rag but little Modesto. He's part of the monkey business family. So here's this little guy and you can put him anywhere in your kitchen and he'll actually hold all of your little towels or whatever. So he's really, really handy. Okay, so here we're gonna go ahead and just mix everything up. All right. Now. Okay, so here's my little bloomin' onion assembly line. Okay, so here I actually have a little bit of my pancake mix dry with um, nothing in it really, because I already have so much seasoning on the last part. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of breading inside of the onion. Gonna try to work the petals open too, that'll help it out. Now, if your onion is really stubborn, you could also pop it under uh, hot water for about a minute, and that'll help open up the onion. All right now, I'm gonna put it here in the egg. Kind of put the egg inside the onion here. Just try to get it in as much as possible. Try to cover it as best I can. Okay, now I'm going to leave my onion kind of on the open side. But this is kind of one of those, you know, over or under on the toilet paper. Everyone's got their own ideas, okay? But I like to put it uh, petal side down because when you flip 
all the breading gets into the nooks and crannies of the onion. So that just makes sense to me. All right, I'm gonna put the top here on the breader bowl and then all you're gonna do is just flip it over. And that's as easy as that. So here I'm using a dry batter, or dry breading I should say, but if you had a wet batter, you could use a wet batter in here as well. So now it gets all in there, and then put it back down. And then when we take this onion out, it's going to be perfectly breaded. Take a look. I mean, take a look at this onion. I mean, guys, that's perfectly breaded from every which way, every angle has got all of that breading, all the seasoning. So when this fries up, it's gonna be perfect. All right, now we're gonna head over to the fryer and we're gonna fry this bad boy. All right, so we're gonna put them in the little hot oil bath. All right, and then he's just gonna start to bloom up here. I'm gonna keep an eye on him. And this is the same thing, you know, it could be over, it could be under. And sometimes the onion does what it wants to do, you know? Uh, so you just go with the flow. Oh my God, this is looking good though, right? Like all the petals are opening up. This is like the perfect blooming onion. I'm telling you, that breader bowl and that onion cutter gadget, I mean, mwah, just perfect. Okay, so I think it's done. All right. Let me pick her up here. Oh my God, that is perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead. Let it sit on that plate. Oh my God, it's already, the petals are starting to fall down. I'm gonna make a dipping sauce. Okay, so I set my blooming onion aside, but don't forget we have our French onion soup minus the soup onions in the oven that are just done. Oh my God, look how beautiful and brown they are. I can't wait to show you all of this. You have that beautiful caramelized Gruyere cheese on the top, that Lipton beef onion soup, plus don't forget the Saltopia salts on the top. Oh my God, so amazing. And here's our blooming onion. So take a look at this, it bloomed just perfectly. And now I'm just gonna add the dipping sauce because you gotta have the dipping sauce. So I have a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of mayo and horseradish. And to this, I'm gonna add, just to keep it consistent, my little Saltopia uh, ranch version. So I'm gonna add my little ranch in there because remember we put a little bit of that ranch in the batter from the Vicky's pancake mix. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and give that a stir. And then you are pretty much done and you are ready to eat. Okay, now when it comes to onions, there's also the whole idea of, well, I cut an onion, but I didn't use a whole onion for the day, so what do I do with the other half of the onion? I have some really great solutions I want to show you. The first one is from our friends at Monkey Business, and this is called the Bell Pod. So think of um, Bell from Beauty and the Beast, where the rose is in that beautiful glass case. That's what this is, <laughs> that's what they're kind of mimicking here with the onion pod. Now you can put anything in here that you want to save. I'm doing an onion, um, but it's a really cute way to have your onion saved without kind of the plastic wrap that's just not as cute. And plus it keeps it much more fresh in the pot. Now another really cool pod is this one. And this one's from Joy. And um, it looks kind of like, you're like, well, how do I use this thing? So you actually open it up, it comes in two halves. So you open it up, you put the half of the onion that you didn't need, and then when you go ahead and put the top on, it actually is kind of like a uh, forever uh, saran wrap. So you just keeps, keeps it nice, it keeps it in there, and you don't uh, get any onion smell in the refrigerator too, just keeps it nice and fresh. So some really great ideas for you. And if you really hate that onion smell that comes when you are chopping onions, grab yourself one of these little metal soaps here. Now this is from Gadget Chef. Not to be confused with Gadget Queen, but the Gadget Chef are the same makers who actually made the glasses too. 
So that way when you're using this and you want to get that onion smell off of your fingers, you just go ahead and use the little metal soap there. So some really great ideas for you here in my gadget kitchen. All right, now with all these onions, we definitely need something to go with it. So our friends from Happy to Meet You are here with our good friend and national TV host, Stacy Stoffer. Stacy, what do you have to go with these onions? Thanks, Suze, and I think you need a good steak for that onion. So we're gonna make a classic steakhouse favorite, a New York strip steak, and we're gonna do a dry rub. So we're gonna take some ground espresso, that's gonna be our coffee base. The sweet part of this is a nice heaping helping of brown sugar. We're gonna take some cumin, of course, little ancho chili powder. You can use regular chili powder, chipotle, I just prefer ancho chili. We're gonna do a little onion powder, some smoked paprika, you can do sweet, I just happen to like smoked. And then here is some dry mustard. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this a good mix. You just wanna break this up with the back of the spoon or just use a fork. We're gonna press it into our meat and we wanna do this on all sides. All right, so when it comes to pan searing your steaks, you want a screaming hot cast iron skillet. Just add a little bit of oil, like a tablespoon, that's all you need. And you're gonna swirl it around to coat the skillet. You'll know the oil is hot when it starts to build a smoke or just hold your hands over it. You can feel that heat. This one is ready to go. So we're gonna take our strips that are now at room temperature and we're gonna put them on. Let this finish cooking as it rests on a separate pan. And we'll go ahead and tent this. See all that juice there because we let it rest? So important, one of the most important steak tips I think out there. And now, my friends, should we cut inside? See? Look at that, a perfect medium rare steak. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to do it, I just have to take a bite. So stinky good. Yeah. All right, Susie, back to you. Well, that does it for the Chop It Like It's Hot episode. We definitely chopped it like it was hot. We had an amazing blooming onion, amazing uh, baked French onion soup, all on today's episode. So beautiful, love the onions. If you want to see more, check me out on Instagram at Gadget Queen TV or Susie Hassan TV. Thanks so much for joining and you'll see why next time they call me the Gadget Queen. Bye.